Hey guys, we're back with Desperate Housewives. I just got the gun from Mike, where we left off last time. If you need to watch previous episodes, link in the description. Uh, all right, so we can give the, we were getting the gun from Mike to give to Daniel. He like made us, there was no way not to. I don't trust Daniel, he's gonna like fucking shoot us. It's a pain in the ass, I think he lives here. And then we have an optional goal of seducing our husband, but I think we might hold out on him because he was like, I'm going to make dinner tonight. Maybe you could show me how. And then we showed him how to make dinner and actually made dinner. So there's no point, but we'll see. Maybe he'll make dinner. We had dinner for breakfast when I made it. So we'll see what the husband does. If he deserves to be seduced, then he'll be seduced. Can you... Oh my god, like it's 10 you, years later. It's you, thank god. Did you bring the gun? Yes, Dan, and I got it. Keep your voice down. I want to see it. Oh my god, take it. I don't even want to look at it anymore. It actually, It's actually kind of beautiful. Here you go. I never thought I'd say this, but it's actually kind of beautiful. Now that I know how easy it is to get my hands on a gun, I think I might like one too. I like the feel of it in my hands. Yes. Wow. Now that I'm actually holding it, it feels different than I expected. I mean, this thing can kill someone. I hope I don't have to use it. God, he sounds really <laughs> inexperienced for this. What did you expect? It's a gun. Bang, bang. Didn't you ever play cops and robbers when you were a kid? You're right, Daniel. Having a gun is no joke. That's why I asked you up front if you really wanted one. That's kind of the idea, Daniel. I hope you don't have to use it either, but just in case. I'll say this one. Well, I can't thank you enough. Somehow, I knew you could do it. Let's just keep this transaction between you and me, Daniel. Nobody needs to know the truth. This bitch better Your not run his safe mouth. with me. Thanks again. Seriously, Daniel, no one can find out about this. I could get into a lot of trouble. You are far too worried about this. I need it for protection, that's all. Everything will be fine. Hi! Asshole. Pfft. Should, like, ruin these roses. Alone time. Daniel is in a weird place right now. Now that you've helped him out with his situation, you should probably give him some distance. Head home now. Uh. Honey, are you alright? What? Yeah, I'm fine. What's wrong? You sound frantic. Of course I am. Why are you calling me from your office phone? I thought you were at home. Uh, was there an emergency? No, no. I had to take care of paperwork, but there was an accident. I, I don't have time to explain. What? Get down here as fast as you can. Oh my god. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'll explain everything when you get here. Hurry. Oh my god. We were just at the office seeing our therapist. Oh my god. What drama could be going down now? And why does Daniel need the gun? Fucking assholes are after me because his stupid brother framed us. These people are driving me nuts this chat. Like this this episode, everyone's just driving me fucking nuts. <laughs> Alright, what's going Thank God on? You're here. Oh Starting to come too. I don't have the discs. This guy, the one who framed us. Did he get beat up? Or is it just the graphics? I thought he was beat up for a second, but I think he has a tattoo there and that's his face what, isn't beat up. What happened? Where am I? What happened to him? I don't know. I just stopped by to pick up some paperwork and I found him in the parking lot. Unconscious and obviously badly beaten. Oh, never mind. He was badly beaten. I called you as soon as I realized it was Frank. Was he in an accident or something? He looked awful. What happened? Someone did a number on him. He's suffering massive head trauma and numerous contusions. Rip. But it looks like he's coming around. Ah, my head. Where am I? Frank, it's Skank. Oh my god, our names like practically rhyme almost. How cute. Can you tell us what happened? Frank, it's me. You're in my office and my wife is here too. I found you in my parking lot. You were unconscious so I brought you into my office. I, I went to meet with them. They wanted the discs, so we arranged to meet downtown. Why would you do that? Did the police or Eric Larson know about this? I know I should have told the police or the feds, but they were pretty clear what would happen if I talked to anyone. They said they would kill me. And then Daniel. Well, no loss to our neighborhood. What are you both talking about? <laughs> you know who broke into the house? Y you've been talking to the feds? Frank finally broke down and told me all about his past indiscretions. I was waiting for the right time to tell you. Frank has some old business that followed him to Fairview. We'll talk about it later. Right now, we have to make sure he's okay. No. These people put me through a ringer. We don't know for sure. It's something Frank and I talked about earlier. Let's just say there are some definite scal 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 times in his closet. 
say this one. Oh no. Daniel, how long have I been here? I overheard them talking about heading to the house to search for the disc. Oh boy. If Daniel is there, uh, oh my god, we need to warn Daniel. I just came from your house. I left Daniel when facial hair called. Oh no. Oh no. Daniel's all alone in your house. We have to warn him. Daniel won't there. stand a chance if those men show up. We need to warn him right away. Ah. I bet Daniel ends up shooting Frank or Skank. Call the Fox or my house husband. right now. Warn Daniel to get out of that house. Warn Daniel. I have to call Daniel Max. Edie, why is she here? Come on now. Hello, this is Daniel Fox. Daniel, it's me. You need to get out of the house right away. What's the matter? You. Oops. Ah, hold on, sweetie. Someone's at the door. Oh my god, this fucking guy. No, Daniel, don't answer the fucking door, Daniel. God damn it. I swear. Oh, there goes the gun. Three shots. What the fuck? Bye. <laughs> Bye. Get to Daniel's house. Oh, no. Wait. Talk to you. Hello, dear. Did you want to see me? Yes, I did. I need you to have a talk with your son. What about? Well, I like how we're interrupting this very serious thing. Like, well, we doesn't have goals in life. Your son is growing up to be a womanizer. You need to have a man-to-man -man talk with him about respecting women. I don't have the time. I'm really busy at the office these days. Why can't you speak with him? You can't make time for your son. What kind of father are you? You're absolutely right. I'll speak to him tomorrow. Okay, thanks, honey. Now we need to go. Daniel just, there was just some gunshots on my phone call with him. He answered the door to the bad guys. Come on, boys. Need to go. Why am I the only one? Acting serious about this. <laughs> After having that conversation. Alright. Let's go. Wait, what? What's over here? My house. Get to Daniel's house. Oh, there. The map updated. I was like, what's going on? Sneak in. Oh, shit! Is that Daniel Fox? R.I.P.? Hello? Jesus! I'm bleeding! Help me! They shot me! Damn it! They shot me! Oh my god, where are you shot? No, no, oh no, Daniel, who did it? Two men. It happened so fast. I I didn't have time to to react. Oh, oh, oh god, I can't feel my legs. Hold on, help us on the way. Alright, all time right. to go seduce the husband. It doesn't even hurt anymore. It's okay. Just let me go. You can't die, Daniel. Listen to me. Stay with me. Um, keep looking at me. Um, well, rip. Tell Frank, I'm sorry I wasn't a better brother. Uh, I never told him how proud I am of him and how much I loved him. Tell him for me, please. Frank should be here soon. Just hold on and tell him how you feel on the way to the hospital. It's so cold. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, but don't worry about me. I'm gonna be okay. I know that. Daniel! I'm so tired. I'm gonna close my eyes. Tell Frank I love him. I will, Daniel. He loves you very much, too. Take care of my begonias. Oh, no. Fuck that. I was about to rip those motherfuckers up when I left your house today. You making me get that gun. Oh, and now you're dead. So, you know what? I guess I was right, asshole. But, you know, rest in peace. Okay, I will. Daniel. Daniel! <gasps> <laughs> All right. Oh my God, I tried to make that noise. I almost died myself. My God. In an idyllic place like Wisteria Lane, it's easy to take things for granted. The comfort and strength that only a spouse can offer, the support of a family, and the health and safety of one's children. For poor Frank Fox, he'll never have the opportunity to tell his little brother how much he loved him, how much he respected him, and how far he will go to avenge his death. Whoa! What if he finds out we get we got the gun, though? And then he's after us. Frank's caused enough issues for us. Like, seriously. Alright, start. Next chapter. For some people, tragedy creates a burden too overwhelming to bear. And while mourning may provide relief for many of us, 
For others, it does nothing to alleviate their pain and suffering. In Frank Fox's case, it only fuels his rage toward the people who committed this heinous act. And we run the risk of watching one tragedy quickly lead into another. Okay. Well, I guess I never got to seduce the husband. Oh, here comes May the I speak with you for a young moment? lad. Mrs. K-Pop, may I speak with you for a moment? Oh. Just call me Skank. Sure. <laughs> sure, Skank. Well, as I'm sure you're well aware, there's an ongoing investigation into Daniel Fox's murder. All too aware, officer, this is a very small town. Oh, God, Mike is gonna, they're gonna think it, Mike did it. Oh, no, if you watch the show, Mike, shit gets pinned on Mike, like, all the time. That's so unfortunate. We haven't had much success getting information on the perps. If you're interested in getting the details, the officer on post at the Fox House should be able to fill you in. Who knows? Maybe you'll be able to help us out. I'll do what I can. Maybe later. Right now I have to check on Daniel's brother, Frank. I don't check on him. Sorry to bother you, but I need to talk to you about something. Really? Daniel became a part of our little group, our clique. This tragedy is affecting all of us. I didn't see that bitch in our poker games. When was he part of our clique? The only time I saw Daniel when it was when he was asking for me to run around town doing favors for him. It's a sad time for all of us, Bree. I just wish I could do something about it. He did. He did make us that dress, though. We will. I'm gonna put it on in his honor. In honor of Daniel, I'm putting together a little get-together around 7 tonight. To be honest, you seem to be taking it better than the rest of us. I'd really like you to be there. If it really means that much to you, I'll be there. What time do you need me? Um, I can try, but what would I do? <laughs> what? I don't want to say that just because it's weird. People just seem to listen to you. I think they find you to be a soothing presence. Mm, I highly doubt people find Skank to be a soothing presence. We're pretty vicious on this game, honestly. You can do one of two things. Talk everyone through their feelings of loss. Or pour some stiff drinks so we can forget about it for a few hours. Oh, yes. Let's get fucked Personally, up. Personally, I think overt emotional displays are crass. But Susan thought it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we all made a pact to wear the dresses that Daniel created for us for the fashion show. I assume you'll join us? Oh my god, this bitch just freaking stole my idea. I seem to be the designated mourner these days. I think I know what you mean. I know of a few people that could definitely use a little consoling. We would all appreciate whatever you can do to help. Whatever, Bree. Wow. You can count on me, Bree. Do whatever I can to help you and the other girls out. You can count on me. Let's be nice this time. I mean, Skank is nice. <laughs> When she needs to be. But sometimes she goes a little too far. Alright. Change outfit. Oh, I guess I can upgrade. You guys want me to upgrade this, like, stuff. And now it doesn't match this one. And I can't even upgrade this shit. Upgrade my bed, though. Oh, nice. What the heck? Wait, no. I already did that. Chair? Can I upgrade that? Bed, can you please? I can't even change other furniture. Upgrading this was pointless because now none of my furniture matches. What did you guys make me do? <laughs> Alright, this is Fox Original. Alright, I got it. Accept. Let's go. Wait, do we have a fucking pool? Hold on. Did I just see a- WHAT?! Can we swim? Go? Good. Wait, oh, it's pause. I was like, what is going on? All right, hold on. Can I swim? Go outside. Skank. Please. Ah, lame. Lame. Wait. Oh, it'd be sweet if you could ride around in the tractor. All right, go outside. All right, what do I have to do now? Weight of depression. Console Bree. Console Edie. Console Gabrielle. Consoling Lynette. Console Susan. Why didn't it say console? All right. While at the party, listen to how she feels. All right. So that's gonna all be during the party. Weight of depression. Let's go to Frank's house. He's gonna be flipping out. I'm like I'm gonna kill all these motherfuckers. Oh, and the cop is there too. 
You can talk to him. Alright, talk to you. Good day to you, ma'am. Is there something I can do for you? First, Mrs. Now, ma'am, what's with you people? Yes, I was coming by to check in on Frank Fox. Is he around? There certainly is. <laughs> and what's that? Him? You can let me go inside and talk to my friend. You can tell me how to get in touch with Frank. I'm sorry, but at the moment I'm unable to disclose any information to you regarding Mr. Frank Fox. And I certainly can't let you speak with him. I was told to stand here and see to it no one went inside. This is a crime scene, you know. Oh, come on. Can't you let me in for a minute? We're good friends. Hey, you. Oh, God. What's Edie about to do? Oh, she'll seduce the cop. This is perfect. Hey, Edie, you seem pretty lively. What's up? I've been running around like a chicken with his head cut off lately. Well, thanks for that lovely image. What a wonderfully tasteless thing to say, even for you, Edie. Why is that? Hmm. Let's just say the whole murder in the neighborhood thing isn't exactly a boon for the real estate business. I've been so busy rustling up prospective clients that I haven't been able to spend time with Carl. Quality time, if you know what I mean. In the bedroom, in case I'm not being clear. Carl's a good-looking man, Edie. Deny him long enough and someone else will gladly step in and take your place. Uh, trust me, Edie, I got it the first time. The officer right next to me understood. Pretty much everyone in a 100-yard radius, including the paper boy, knows exactly what you're talking about. Right, I should say that. right now, I'm on my way to check out another house going on the market. I'll take care of Carl tonight. Okay. And it looks like you're already talking to someone. A handsome someone, if I may say so. Yeah, but Officer Friendly here isn't living up to his name. No! Did it freeze? No! How dare you, Edie Britt! Rip you! Rip you! You're next! Oh god, okay, never mind. Skank, is the strapping young policeman here giving you a hard time? Yes? No, ma'am. I'm just following orders. And you're doing an excellent job at that. Tell you what, why don't I fill her in instead? Um, wait. You're looking for Frank, right? Yes, have you seen him? Yeah, have you seen him lately? Yeah, have you seen him? I don't know for sure, but I can tell you where I think he is. Miss? You actually just missed him. That's confidential information, ma'am. I'd appreciate it if you refrain from divulging information regarding Mr. Fox as he relates to this case or his whereabouts to anyone other than an officer such as myself. Oh, shut up, Buzzkill. They put him in a squad car just a little while ago. Hey! What? Do they think he had something to do with his own brother's murder? They arrested him? I don't think he was under arrest. Officer Friendly here didn't even put handcuffs on him. He did let me play with him, though. Oh! <laughs> I think Frank can take care of himself. They probably just want to find out if he knows anything. Oh, well. Maybe they didn't have any handcuffs with them. Whatever. Besides, Officer Kyle's not the type to manhandle a perp. Wait a minute. How do you know Kyle? I was his date to the policeman's ball last year. Trust me, he is more than adept at handling a woman. But a man? Not him. But they canceled last year's policeman's ball. Well, why else did they have all those handcuffs and men in uniform in one place? You're new on the force, aren't you? I'm not that new. Don't worry about Frank. I'm sure they just wanted him to look through mugshots or something. He'll be there for a while before they take him to the safe house. Well, there you go. From the lips of cute little officer friendly here. He's at the station if you want to see him. I think I have a cell phone number here somewhere. You've been so much help. Maybe I'll put in a good word with Officer Kyle. Thanks, but don't tell him what I said about Mr. Fox. Oh, don't worry. My lips are sealed. At least when it comes to talking. <laughs> oh, Edie. All righty then. Bye. Oh, my God. Hello again, Mrs. Ma uh, hi. <laughs> this guy's so nervous. He's choking. Hello yourself. I'm sorry, but I can't really talk to you. I have to man my post. I'm on official police business. You've been out a while. Don't you need a break? It's all part of the job. You take care to have have a good rest of your day. Bye. I like how that's bye is like the mean one. And okay is the nice one. And thanks is okay. When shouldn't okay be like the bad one? You're just like, okay. Bye. Oh, yeah, they have the body outline. Okay. Get a hold of Frank. Let's see if we can call him. Oops. Frank. Hello? Skank? 
Yes, it is I. Hi, Frank. I know you're with the police. And oh my god, they're coming after me right now. They're about to hit me with their fucking car. Oh my god, they stopped just in time. Holy fuck, Frank. What is going on?